Welcome to the HCI Family of Podcasts, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We share our own original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. Join us for practitioner-oriented content around all things leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with the HCI family of podcasts. Jose Berlanga, welcome to the conversation today. Hello, John. It's great to be here. How are you? I am fantastic. It's great to be with you. You're joining us from the Houston area. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about the truth about business growth, lessons learned, wins and losses, and really that raw truth. And, you know, you've lived it. I'm super thrilled to have the chance to uh, sit down with you and to have a real raw conversation about what you've learned throughout your career. As we get started, I wanted to share Jose's bio with everybody. At only four years old, Jose Berlanga found himself at death's door following a devastating accident that left his body covered in third degree burns. Determined not to let tragedies solely define his life story, Jose set out to make a name for himself. Uh, he has achieved multimillionaire status four distinct times in four separate industries, an import-export company for machinery, for the petrochemical industry, investments including a chain of Italian coffee bars, a residential construction company, and lastly, land development and construction. Each success was a feat of starting from ground zero and meticulously building his wealth anew. Uh, I think it's it's super interesting that this, you know, you, you've done this four completely distinctly set four separate times. Um, you're going to kind of walk us through what that's looked like um, to kind of pull yourself up by your bootstraps to, to um, build success, what that's looked like for, for you to do that from a resiliency standpoint, but also what that's looked like to build successful business, to build successful teams. Uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to, to have you sit down with me to talk about all this. Before we dive on in, anything you'd like to share by way of your background or personal context, and, we'll, and then we'll launch into the conversation. Well, sounds good. Sounds good. Again, it's great to be here. Just listening to that intro is is exhausting just to think about <laughs> the, the life events that have uh, taken place uh, o- over the decades. Uh, <clears throat> yes, yes. The the I I can uh, honestly say that I am an expert in dealing with adversity, in dealing with setbacks. Mm. That has been my life: dealing with problems, dealing with issues. That forms, that develops an ability to solve problems, just like practicing any other science. uh, The the problem solving in life, in real life, uh, gradually develops an ability for you to move forward, to deal with it, to get over it, and move on to the next one. And they never stop. It is just a game of life, dealing with these issues. Um, You name some of the industries where I've succeeded um i'm 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 proud that i've achieved uh, some level of accomplishments in in a few industries but what not a lot of people see are the other dozens of attempts that i made Mm. uh, exhausting attempts to build a company to start a company to work on a concept endlessly that did not work it's the nature it's the nature of business it is do we really want to know the truth? That's that's the question of all questions. Um, <clears throat> as we investigate, uh, per, perhaps trying to become an entrepreneur, to some people, it's a scary thought. To some others, it's just a natural progression of, of your career. Uh, there, there's, there's something to be said about personalities. There are personalities who really, really wish to do that, and they're able to do it. Uh, some others are more conservative. They prefer to... The, the path of uh, a more simple, more calm, more consistent, safer life. Um, entrepreneurship is a life of uncertainty. It's a life of pressure, of stress, of surprises. Every day is mm-hmm. new. It has its uh, ups and downs. I honestly have to say that in, in our world of uh of the business world, there are definitely more bad days and good days. There are more bad moments and good moments, but those good ones uh, really make up for the for the rest of all of the toughness. 
um, of, of this particular lifestyle. I call it, it's not even an industry, it's not even a career, it's a life choice where you live to design your own future, your own success. There are no limits, but uh, the ones that you set out yourself to 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 achieve. And and certainly the, the secret is uh, persistence, to mm. just not take no for an answer, to continue no matter what uh, kind of uh, problems. I, I'm, I'm going to say that there hasn't um, been many moments when I, or difficult moments when I wasn't ready to walk away from, from, from business altogether and, and just take an easier route. Uh, so it, it is, is it part of the process? It, yes, it, it is difficult. It is excruciating at, at times, trying to juggle all mm -hmm. of the different things that owning and building a business represents. But the trick is to um, take a little break and snap out of it and get back uh, and, and, and keep going. Uh, I am too curious to really, uh, and I have been my, old, my, my, my whole life, uh, to want to see what's on the other side of of all of these problems. I, I want to learn what success is all about. And that's what keeps yeah. you going. Can I ask you about that? So that snapping out of it piece, because yes, you're absolutely right. Life is beautiful, but life is hard. Life throws things at you. It always will. And it doesn't matter, you know, if, if you're wealthy, if you're poor, um, you know, everyone has challenges and, and I, I get it. Like, you know, if someone's starving on the street, you know, they're going to say, well, I'll take the rich person's problems any day of the week. You know, I just want food. I get it. Like there are different types of problems. Um, but the reality is everyone does have problems and everyone struggles. They're just different. They, but they are different types of problems. Yes. Um, but, but when you're, when life throws you a challenge, when life throws you a problem and beats you down and it will, um, regardless of where you're at in your own journey, it will throw you a new problem when it beats you down. And when you're on the ground, how, how do you, how have you like gone through that mental kind of mindset shift and reset to, you know, get back up again, because you, you said it, you've had these four distinct, like super successful, um, uh, business ventures, the four times that it's just gone super well. But for every success, there are behind the scenes other failures, uh, or maybe I should say rather than failures, there are other countless learning opportunities that have then been leveraged into the successes that you've had. And I can say the same thing in my own life. Like, you know, sometimes people will ask me, John, you know, I, and I, I can't say that I've had the same level of success you've had, but, you know, people will look at me and they're like, John, you have a successful career. You've done, how do you do all the things that you do? You know, why do, do does everything always work out for you? And I'm like, well, no, like I, I have way more failures than I ever have successes. I have way more rejections than I ever have uh, acceptances or people saying yes. You know, I have way more no's than yeses, you know, but yeah. it, it, it's a matter of like all of that stuff happens behind the scenes. All that stuff happens. I, I mean, I probably have at least 10 to one, like failures to successes that people see. Um, and it, it, so like, what do you do when you get those, those, those knockdowns to like do the mental reset so that you can respond in a positive way when, and when frankly, a lot of people just get discouraged or they give up or they just say, ah, it's not for me. I'm just going to go, you know, try something that's a little bit more stable, a little bit more secure, a little bit more safe. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. Well, that's, that's a, uh... A great subject and a great question. You, in order to be sustainable in 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 a career, you need a reason. You need a purpose in order to continue. That's perhaps the number one uh, tool. Let's call it. Uh, call it. And, and it doesn't have to be just the money. It can be your family. It can be the achievement, the mission, the 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 objective. You have to focus on the objective and you can look at it. You, you name, you nailed it. It's not called, uh, I don't necessarily call them failures. They're setbacks, they're obstacles, bumps on the road. Because I, I always say that by default, we will succeed as long as we don't quit. We can have bad yeah. days. We can have bad businesses. Uh, we can have businesses that just don't get anywhere. And we have to move on to the other one. 
into the next one in, in, in further attempts. But we haven't truly failed as long as we don't throw the towel and completely walk away from it. It's sort of, you can have any analogy, sort of like in a game, you can lose a few points. Uh, you can uh, uh, be behind on the scoring uh, at any given point, but the game is not over and life is the game. As long as you continue and keep pushing and the moment the life pushes back, you just keep pushing forward because that's life's job. It's going to push back. Mm. It's not going to make it easier. And you also said something important, which is, I don't care who you are. If you're rich, if you're poor, if you are good looking, if you come from a, 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 a great, wonderful family, we all have problems. We all have issues. The brain is a complicated thing that even when you have all of the things that appear to be the the basic needs in order to achieve happiness, the, uh, it's not doesn't quite work that way. It uh, the brain finds other things to worry about and stress over and complicate your existence. You need to find those objectives within yourself and in, in, in that ability to find the purpose for living and moving forward. Um, I always say that you don't necessarily need passion. You don't necessarily need to find something that you enjoy doing in order to be successful. You just need to have the, the willingness, uh, the resilience, to want to get somewhere, to want to become successful. I, it's still at, at, at the level uh, that I am. I don't necessarily work because I enjoy everything that I do. There mm -hmm. are many things within my activities that are not too crazy about, but I do them because I see that they lead mm -hmm. to my objectives. They are, uh, they, they are part of the process of me becoming the best version of the person that I want to be. So I start ignoring, to the best of my ability, I'm not going to say that I don't have moments again where things get very tough and I get annoyed uh, and I don't want to keep doing what I'm doing and I want to change the uh, the course of, of my activities. But uh, but at some po point, you you have to realize why you're doing what you're doing and and um, you know and and find that strength. So is it is it easy? Uh, absolutely not. Every person has to find a way to do it in their own way. Uh, you have to learn to understand yourself, what it is that wakes you up in the morning, what gives you motivation, what gives you incentives to keep going. Uh, you have to know your weaknesses. You have to know your strengths. You have to be honest with yourself and identify them. Sometimes we lie to ourselves and we think that we want something for the wrong reasons. And mm -hmm. when that doesn't happen, we get disappointed, discouraged, sad, and we quit because we weren't fighting for the right uh, objectives. We weren't fighting the right battles. So identifying those little by little starts giving you a, a, a reason for moving forward. I don't always know what gives me that strength as part of your identity, part of your personality. And it takes a little bit of practice too. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think we often don't understand that about ourselves because we just kind of get into our day-to-day -day routine. We just do what we do. And we're so influenced by the world around us. Like society tells us these things are important. X, Y, Z is important. You know, the so the norms... Um, you know, our friend groups, our families, the community around us, society as a whole says X, Y, Z is important. And we just think that's important. So we just do what everyone else does. And, you know, by and large, that may be fine. But but when it comes to doing things that are really hard, that will not sustain us. Uh, so if if we're uh, trying to, to start and run a business, that is really hard. Um, most businesses don't last five years. And it's because it's really hard. So you're not, you're, you know, you, you, you may have a great idea. Uh, it may be a super genius idea that the world needs that, that, um, you know, you're the first one to ever come up with. That's not enough. Like you, you have to work your butt off to be able to bring that to market and to be able to help people become aware of it. And it's not enough to have the great idea. And, and, and so, just just doing it because it's interesting to you, because it's fun, whatever, 
Like what's your deeper why? And it, and it, it can't just be something because you, you know, whatever surface level thing, because, you know, whatever that surface level motivation is, the world tells you is important. Like what's your deeper why? And that's, yeah, yeah. like we get, you got to dig deeper and, and, and yeah, in my experience, a lot of people don't really know until push comes to shove and they're really forced to learn what that deeper why is for them. Um, you're I'm, very, I mean, you're, it, you're very right. You're very, any, right. any, any idea like, because I hate, like, I, I don't want people to have to wait until like life throws them such a big curveball that they're forced to hit rock bottom to figure that out. Like how, how can like, we like proactively discover that for ourselves without have being compelled to like, figure it out. <laughs> you know That's what right. I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, and it's all uh, being introspective. It's, it's, attempting to learn sitting down for a minute and learning a little bit about ourselves this is something that i do very often i'm a deep thinker i recommend people uh to spend a little time with with themselves just identifying getting to know uh oneself is very important because the definition of success should be it it is and it should be very different for all of us yeah, yeah. society tells us Put success in a box. You have to have this. You have to have money. You have to have a certain type of career. And it defines it very clearly. But it's meaningless to many of us. If you don't identify what it is that makes you happy, who are you? What do you want out of life? What are you willing to give in exchange of achieving the goals and the dreams that you have? We are all born not only with certain characteristics, but in a certain environment. And that environment tends to play a big part of who we become. And we end up living a life that we perceive to be the right one. How many of us have had uh, mentors, parents, uh, older brothers and sisters, family and friends that guide us through a life that we don't necessarily want or or wish to have for, for the rest of our lives? We become an attorney because my dad was an attorney and I become a yeah. doctor because my, or, or, or I get into finance because that's what I've been told. And we follow those footsteps. Even now, it, it's getting worse and worse with the social media, with Instagram and Facebook and all of these tools that lead us to believe that success has one phase, one format, and that is a mistake. What I recommend is for you to have the clarity to identify what does it mean to you? What do you want to achieve out of your life? And the way I do this here is a good tool. I sit around and uh, I transport myself 20, 30 years from now. And I start thinking about where do I want to be? What do I, what kind of stories I want to tell? Who do I want to look back and say that I was in the things that I achieved? And that is the person that I want to become, the one that I know it's going to make me happy and proud. And it's not about money. It's not about success. It's about the path that you follow to get to that point where you're going to feel proud of yourself. Now, of course, there's something to be said about the combination of finding that path and being able to support yourself. Nowadays, we're yeah. all into finding that passion and, and being happy. There's a, a, a new generation of people who just want to be happy and have an endless amount of pleasure. But we forget the other extreme, which is not all about joy and happiness and pleasure and relaxation. You also have to support yourselves and your families and be able uh, to, to turn yourself into a, 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 a a good member, a productive member of society. So you have to blend those two. You don't have to reach any level of, uh, again, what people perceive as success. You have to be su successful within yourself, be able to support yourself, be able to have the lifestyle that you want and be able to support it. So finding the easiest way and the most comfortable way of getting there takes a little bit of time for you to think about it and make those decisions without being influenced. Giving, for example, now that I look back 
and I spend a lot of time helping others, mentoring and giving advice, I'm very careful in the way that I dispense this type of information because one thing is what I believe will make you happy and something else is what it's truly going to turn you into a, um, a, a, a an inner, uh, give you that inner peace and, and, and provide you with that happiness. So you even then be careful on the other side, be careful whose advice you take. Even if they are people who you may look up to, they may necessarily not feel or want the same things that you do. So right. uh, listen, take advice, but always make your own conclusions as to where you see your life headed. Yeah, great advice, great advice. And you're absolutely right. Like getting advice from trusted advisors, I, I'm a big believer in kind of like surrounding yourself with people you trust, having your own personal board of advisors, so to speak. Great, great idea. But ultimately, you have to still make your own decisions. You still have to ultimately decide what is best for you. And you can't just outsource that responsibility. You can't just outsource your your motivations. You can't outsource you know what's important to you, and and I think people do that all the time. Uh, people, whether it's uh, I don't know whether it's like a political party or a religion or whatever, they just say you know what what matters to other people. That's going to be what matters to me, and that's that's a shortcut that sometimes kind of works for people, but in the long run, I don't think it's really going to work. Like you, and and it may be that you have most alignment. Like you know, like I know religion works for, for people. And I consider myself a spiritual person, but like you, you may have like 90% alignment with whatever like religious community that you're a part of, but you personally need to decide how your values and your motivations align with that community, right? You can't just wholesale outsource, you know, you, that to them. Like you have to make that decision for yourself or a political party or, or a friend group or like whatever, like whatever it is. And it, I think the same thing applies when you get to the workplace um, with a, 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 an organization you're working with. Um, if you have a team that you're working with, when you're trying to find meaning and purpose and you're trying to collaborate effectively with other people, um, you know, it, it's an ongoing personal journey that you have to take personal ownership over and and that that can be scary i think for people because as soon as you take personal ownership that means you also take personal responsibility and people don't always want personal responsibility because then if something doesn't work or it doesn't work out the way you want it to then you you can't like blame other people for quote unquote failures but like you just said it's not a failure if, as long as you just don't give up, like if, if, if there's a setback, you, you didn't fail, you just learn and then you grow and then you move forward. Um, and so, so I think a lot of this is just reframing how we view our, our progression in life. And we're never, we're never done until, you know, we're done trying. Um, so okay. Jose, I, I know at the time, this has just been such a fun conversation and I would love to talk to you all day, but I know you have a busy schedule and I need to let you get going with your busy day. Before we start to wrap things up, I wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, your team, where they can find out uh, more about uh, how to work with you in the future, uh, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Absolutely. Uh, thanks again, John. And yes, yes, I can. Uh, I'm, I'm easily found joseberlanga.com. Uh, I am uh, old school where I haven't done much uh, in the social media world. Uh, I'm beginning to adapt to it. Uh, that's That's been a tough one for me coming from a different generation, but I understand that that's the new way to live. I'm going to start uh, doing uh, much more videos and uh, interviews and presentations, conferences and thing, things like that that I truly enjoy. So uh, look out for much more to come. Uh, and um, and just to wrap things up, I agree with you. Uh, be accountable for yourself. Be responsible for your actions. No one can make you happy. No one can turn you into an ambitious person. No one can provide you with the inner peace that you can give to yourself. Know that you own your life. Be confident. Be 
very, very secure about who you are, what you want, where you're headed. Don't let it, others uh, confuse you or blur the path towards your uh, success and your happiness. It, it, this this is something that we all uh, tend to do at some point. We think that we. I love your 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 uh, sweatshirt by by the way. You are enough. <laughs> I think that needs to be the statement to wrap it up. You are enough for the world, for yourself, and then some. So don't uh, ever uh, take people's opinions and allow them uh, to affect the outcome of your life in the path of your, uh, of your success. Awesome. Jose, thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure. I encourage the audience to reach out, to get connected, find out more about what Jose can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the podcast. We hope you stay healthy and safe and please join us again soon.